we'll have about 45 minutes to start patching before we connect the two teams together and then it'll be all out. Oh, you need to be also monitoring the network. If you detect an intrusion, you'll get a lot of marks for this. For the attacking, you'll get marks for infiltrating. But you'll also get marks for documenting what you find. If you get some corporate secrets and you put them on our paste bin, you'll get marks for that. At a different points, the CEO might come in, he wants to question someone in the team, he wants to know what's going on. Can you tell him what the other guy's doing? Can you tell him where you're at? Is your system secure? What's going on? Why are you being hacked? So it's teamwork all the time, make sure everyone knows what's going on, that sort of thing. Right, what the hell are you guys doing? It's an absolute joke. You're supposed to be serious security professionals. Stop what you're doing now. Have you even looked at what's on Pacebin? What the hell is a team photo of you guys doing on Pacebin? My name is Stephanie Damon. I'm CEO of the Cybersecurity Challenge UK. I'm fairly new CEO, so just getting to grips with the challenge myself. But essentially, we're in our third year of operation. Um, very, very exciting. We're, we're here to try and fill the, the skills gap between um, all of the jobs out there that are in cybersecurity and the huge gap that we've identified, um, which is people who don't have the skills any longer to fill those jobs. So that's what we're really about, trying to get people into, into the profession. And we do that by using competitions, really exciting national competitions, which encourage people to benchmark and test their skills and to then, of course, learn from that, that actually they've got the right skills to come into the profession and then we can encourage them to do so with careers advice and with as much help as we can provide. I'm sure you've heard it time and again that actually the biggest cybersecurity issue is not the technology. By and large, we can build technology to do whatever we want it to do. The biggest problem is the interface with the human. What we're tending to find is kind of what you expect of these sorts of students because they're coming from such technical backgrounds. They're very much focusing on the technical solution, not really focusing on the problem and solving the actual problem. Absolutely common with, uh, with kind of students and people with technical backgrounds. Uh, what we are doing now, which is great, is we're now starting to think about the marketing, uh, how we're actually going to target the customers, what the target segments are, how we're going to get the products to market. So I think the presentations this evening will be very, very good, uh, very, very in-depth. Uh, hopefully we've listened to some of the feedback we've actually got from the mentors and forget about the features of the products and the technical solutions start focusing on the benefits to the customers. At uh, the moment we're coming together with our pitch for the Dragon's Den later for our new product uh, to do with wireless uh, two-factor authentication using near-field communication. So your computer is only unlocked when you're nearby and when you have a token and then you use fingerprints as well so you've got the two-factor login. And it kind of giving up like a seamless system, whereas as long as you're away from the computer, it'll be locked and no one can just like steal your password and log in. I'm Nigel Mackey from Ultra Electronics. I'm the strategy director for cyber security. First time I've been involved with the cyber challenge, and uh, I found it absolutely fantastic. Uh, the talent that we're seeing coming through is great. Uh, we need to do more of this. We need to do this in academia, both the, you know, between the universities and industry, but also down through the education system into schools because. When I was at school, I never knew what was happening as going forward, and this is actually opening people's eyes up into this particular and very exciting market of cybersecurity. And the more we do that, the more people will see that they've got a choice of where they want to be rather than where they end up. Just
challenge is going really well. They really enjoyed yesterday and uh, the activities today around entrepreneurship has, has been really good. I think all the instructors are taking the challenges incredibly seriously and taking really interesting roles in each of the challenges to push the contestants to their limits of understanding, really challenge them. People are lazy, naturally, even criminals. And you'll find, speaking to the guys in law enforcement when I train them, probably less than one tenth of a percent hand, uh, hand sets come in locked. And when they do, it's normally just a four pin passcode, which on certain devices we can bypass with XRY. Because people don't want to have to type in the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog every time they want to get into the phone. We've set up some BlackBerry handsets uh, for everybody to try and get data from in order to try and prove a case and, and see if this guy's guilty or not. And I want you to think about emerging trends. Um, I want you to think about what the UK looks like in 2020. What I want you to do is to choose a technology or a policy that we see emerging in society and think how terrorists or criminals could use it in 2020. So we're, we're looking at a um, scenario where a particular state or power has has gained sort of a, a monopoly on a, a resource like precious metals uh, that are required to build technology and uh, how that could affect the future. Oh, really well. Yeah, yeah. couldn't agree more. Um, there, there, there have been some, some, there, some really good, good people. I think they're yeah, definitely in there. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. some there. And the Hardy Perennial. Oh, of yes, course, definitely. yes. And yes. Um, he's really impressed me today. He's really come to Agreed the fore. Agree with that. Agree. Yeah, Interestingly, a lot of development there. A lot mm. of improvement. So, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's starting to push past the borderline, I think. Yeah, what about this guy? Yeah, he's he's kind of stepped up a little bit of a game. I still think he's a little bit too chatty, not as inclusive yeah. as he could be. He doesn't know when to, to hold back and Absolutely. Have, have the space. But he wants he's, to he's, ask all the questions and uh, be seen to be at the front, but yeah. he, he talks too much, he needs to okay. focus. The reason Kinetic got involved with the Cyber Challenge was really because we were seeing um, such a um, such difficulty recruiting into our into the, the cyber security space um, and getting really good talent to come into that part of the industry was extremely difficult and we saw the cyber security challenge as a way to generate interest across um, across the whole of the UK 
uh, and be able to uh, therefore get some of the better candidates. There's a lot of things to get your head round and um, it, it is a challenge, that is what, what it's called, the cybersecurity challenge. I think the highlight for me was probably the, um, the network penetration exercise we did, um, melting down some nuclear reactors was um, a little bit special. I think the hardest thing was being able to get to work in a team um, within the first few minutes of any scenario and because the teams kept changing we had to re-establish who was good at what, where were the strengths and weaknesses in the group of people we were in and get on with the challenge as quickly as possible and in very short time constraints. The thing I enjoyed most was uh, yesterday's sort of dissection of a, a, a legal case, you know, you've, you're taking statements, and you're looking at the implications of the chain of evidence and things when it comes to uh, technology. If you've already got an idea of what you know, you're thinking of bits and pieces, there's always something you, you learn as a result by speaking to other people, especially the experts that they bring along. Uh, they've got a wealth of information just by talking to them. You can learn so much in one conversation than you could read in several chapters of a book. I would absolutely love to come to the Cyber Camp. I would encourage anyone that's thinking of it to uh, get, get on board and join in. It really is great fun. Thank you.